Welcome, welcome, welcome to Justice TV, episode 254. Today is May 24th, 2016. We're going to play a new variant today called Headphones on Your Face. No, it's called Refusal Chess, which means each time you make a move, you're allowed to put your headphones on your face. Sorry, that's not what you're allowed to do. You're allowed to refuse the opponent's move and say, you must make a different move according to what I say, because I'm the boss right now. But when they make the second move, you have to accept it. So you get one take back, forced take back of the opponent's move per move. So this is going to be interesting, and it has nothing to do with the way I'm wearing my headphones right now. Let's get started. Looks like I have a challenge right now on this excellent website. It's from QKXWSM, who's a good friend of mine, actually. So I'm going to accept, even though it's casual, which is extremely rare for me. So you must know that Q, whatever his name is, is a super good friend of mine. So hi, good luck. And then I'll also put the rules here. <coughs> you may require the opponent to select a different move once. Uh, that, that's I hate it when people make an entire sentence out of one word. Uh, so I'm going to do that to make myself angry so I'll play better. Each move you may require the opponent to select a different move. To take back. And okay, that actually says take back. You're just in the matrix and it looks weird. Here we go. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with D4. Um, you can refuse one, one per move. Um, and so I'm going to play my second best move constantly. That's my plan. <clears throat> <clears throat> to save time, right? Because if he asks for a take back, then I'll just play my best move. Um, and it's very tricky when you check. For example, if he checks here and I try this, oh, he'll force me to not do that, so I'll play this. Then when he takes, I'll be like, nope, you can't take. So it's, it gets very confusing very quickly. Confusing. So <clears throat> I'm attacking this knight, right? So when I take it, I've got a headphones on my face. No, I'm just kidding. So when I take the knight, I'll play this one. <clears throat> he has two ways to capture it. That's critical uh, because... If he only has one, I refuse that way, and then he can't capture it at all. So I would be like, nope, you can't take with a queen. So then he takes with a pawn, and that works. You see what I mean? Same thing here. Two captures. Whoops, this isn't quite right. But uh, but we'll see how it works. Uh, this move seems good. The reason I'm playing it is because I actually want to play knight c3, so I hope that he requests a take back. Here, I'm sure he's trying to castle, so uh, I'll play this. <coughs> So far, no requirements, because I, I don't really want him to castle. I'm actually going to just always refuse that he castles, and that's my strategy to annoy him. So every time he tries to castle, I'll say, hey, hey, try a different move. Um, and I'm going to add him some time, because he chose a super. A little more, more time would be nice. I spell more like that, because all the cool kids spell more like that. All the ones that wear the headphones like this do that. So it's completely normal. Completely normal. Sorry the episode started late today, guys. <clears throat> it's because I could not start the episode with a straight face um, because of the way I was wearing my headphones. It's very challenging. I'm going to allow that because I don't want him to castle. Here I'm going to play this. He sends me a smiley, but he does not send me time. You know, I would really prefer time. So this is interesting now, right? I've got a few bishop moves, and he's going to refuse the one he doesn't want me to play. So I'm going to play this one so that if he refuses, I can play capture. This would be very dangerous. No, it wouldn't. See, then I would be worried. He would attack the bishop, and I only have one good move, which he would refuse, and then I would have a big problem with my bishop. But I could actually just take that pawn, refusing his recapture. Ooh, it gets confusing quickly. And there's some time he sent me. Excellent. So this should be, <clears throat> get spicy quickly. It's like a bowl of salsa that you're eating without chips. It's going to be spicy. I'm starting to think an interesting attack would be possible with this move. Um, here I'm going to propose a take back. Try something else. Anything but OO. Oh, oh. This is uh, chess lingo for a castling king side. I don't know why. It also looks kind of like everybody loses, which is an interesting thing to say. So now I'm going to play here to, because I just think this would be so exciting. If I check him and I refuse this, then I, I will force his king over, which is kind of fun. Um, here, I'm going to force him to take that back. I don't want him to take my bishop. Not that, please. Uh, I, I think that losing a bishop would be <clears throat> rough. So here, I can't force that because I forced the other one. So let's try this move, which I assume he's going to force me to take back. So I need to have a different plan. In fact, I should just play that different plan right now, uh, which would not be this, would it? That's too bad because he has two defenders. I guess you just need two things guarding everything. Well, this is so disappointing. I just have to move my knight back. There must be something better here. 
Like maybe if I put this headphone on top of my cheek, then I could uh, find something. But as it is, I think that my silly escapade ended for naught. It ended with nothing. <clears throat> and I think I don't want him to take that bishop, uh, simply because if I r try to recapture, he'll refuse that. And at that point, I can't ask for his refusal because uh, he's already asked for my refusal. So it's like no take backs on your take backs, man. I put a take back in your take back. I knew you like take backs. So you could take back while you take back playing take back chess. It's true. Superweb says, this is something maybe you have not never done before. I don't think that I'm... I don't think that I'm bothered by that. There's so many people in the chat right now because I'm a super populous person. You might think the word is popular. Oh, my bishop is just dying in here. I'm actually going to play here. Oh, yeah, that's a super clever move, Jaswiz. You're a genius. That's how I found bishop e5. I was like, well, let's see now. Am I a genius? Yes, bishop e5. <clears throat> it might look dangerous, but that's only because it is. So first I'm going to try the knight. Oh, this is going to get ugly. If he forces the take back, I'll take with pawn. We need time. You got, you're a crazy time person. And now he did not force the take back. So now I'll castle. Actually. Which he could still take this and super annoy me, which would be pretty bad. Um, but he takes that. And now I know he's going to refuse this move, so let's just not even try it. Let's try... Um, a move that's less stupid. I, I'm not sure what that might be. But let's do this. Oh, it's a genius move! Chess whiz with the geniosity flowing out of the ears. This could be true. <clears throat> this could work. So I've got a link in the chat to an episode called Take Back Chess where we did exactly this. I'm going to refuse that move. Oh no. Who cannot tax me? Uh, oh, propose a tax back. Oh, I scratch my nostril. Totally legal. Let's see what he does. So there was an episode. Take a look at this one right here. Episode 169 was called Take Back Chess. Uh, time, time, time. This is where we go. Time, time, time. And so that he hopefully adds me some. Uh, at this point, I can't require Take Back, but I could check him. That's a great question about Take Back. Can you request a Take Back on a checkmate? Uh, I don't know. What do you think? What do you chatterers think? Start with that move. You cannot. No queen takes. Just FYI, don't waste your time. Everyone's having fun in the chat right now, that's for sure. But I'm not. Oh, I'm going to request a take back. No queen takes. Why did he even bother? I don't know. So now I have this move. Oh, chess whiz, you're a genius of genius proportions. And the geniosity, that's not a word, is flowing out of your ears still. It's not like it was like a trickle and then it stopped. It's like whoosh. Oh, he forces a take back. Oh, never mind. The genius has stopped flowing. That's too bad. <clears throat> hmm. I guess I'll do that. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to do, but... I mean, I've got this, which is cool if he can't take me. I'll try that again, which he's, he's going to request to take back, so I wasted my time. And now I will use my genius ability, ability, that's a word, um, to sacrifice my rook. Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. This move looks cool. I'll just play this move as if it's chess. Having a good chess move is, is good. I do lose this pawn. Oh, I could have big problem, actually, because now I can't... Um, yeah, he's going to refuse king h1, which is going to mean I have to block the check with some powerful piece. Then he's going to take that, and that's pretty bad. So I'm going to request that he not take that pawn. Hopefully I can find some better continuation. He will pick up my knight for free, I assume, but I do have his knight. So this is weird. Rook takes f7 check. Is, I'm being told that would have worked better. What do you guys think of my headphone face? It's pretty good, right? I think it is. So he's probably going to refuse this. No, he's going to allow it because this is even more power. So let's play it. And he's if he's if he says don't do that, he's going to regret that decision for the entire rest of how long he can remember that, which it probably won't be very long. Because soon enough he'll say, who's Chess Wiz? And it won't really matter. Okay, so he just takes that. Yes, and now I have check. 
Um, this this is such a thorn in my thorny thorn. So I think I'll play here. Add time. Time! Ah, oh, stop it with the time! No, I'm gonna run him really low so that he knows to add me time. Uh, and then I'm gonna add him time at the last moment. <clears throat> Please, don't flag me! Don't flag me, bro! No! Oh, he's almost flagging me. Thank? He, he's like, thank? <laughs> That's not the correct grammar. Use a better elderly woman than that grammar. My opponent offers a draw. Oh, he's a, he's a brilliant man for sure. I want to play this, so I'm going to play this. He has to go. Oh, he has to go. Oh, well, this doesn't seem very drawish to me. I think you should resign. Oh, wait, what just happened? Oh, I offered a draw. What a stupid move. My worst move this game was that box that says offer draw. If it weren't for that move, I'd be winning right now. I mean, look at this. I'm like, I'm going to checkmate him, checkmate him, and checkmate him. Don't mind the fact that those are three ways to lose my queen for nothing. And just consider, never mind, those are bad moves, but this, this pawn, I'm going to get it, right? So we do need some rule clarification, because what if he played here? And I'm like, okay, so I want to take your queen, but he, he forbade it with his forbidding device. I wouldn't be able to take that because of the device. So I think we need a rule that says if you only have one move, then you're allowed to play it. So that's an important rule. So let's say that's the case. Um, but what about checkmates? <clears throat> if he plays here, that's checkmate. Uh, you can refuse a checkmate. Wait, can you refuse a checkmate? I don't know. The game's going to end, and then we won't be able to play any more chess. That's kind of disappointing. So what do you guys think? Let's get out of anti-chess mode. Let's play more of this, but with not so much time pressure. And let's put it in the chat, see who wants to play. Okay. Messi answer says no. He says queen takes h2 would be mate. That's how it works. It makes it such little fun. Um, um, yeah, why well, make special rules? Okay, I agree with you, Messi. I totally changed my mind. My mind right now. I don't know if that says totally change my mind right now, but I hope it does. I'll play with you, Maida Margo. I'm starting with d4 because I want to play e4. Should be interesting. The phone goes green, green, green. Green, green, green. So I pink it up and say yellow. He asked for it with his bad smelling of hello. I was talking to this guy last night. And I was like, "Guy, I'd never met him before, so I just called him guy." I was like, "What? But, but do you do you laugh very much?" I'm kind of like an out of the box guy. So when I meet people the first time, I'm like, "Yes, a throwaway account." I'm like, "I'm on a sp I'm like on a spoof mission, whatever it's called, where you have a like a sock puppet or whatever it is, and nobody knows it's you." This is what it was like for the stranger. He's like, oh, "I don't know you, so what's your name anyway?" Right? So I could just be completely goofy, and it wouldn't have any repercussion in my professional life. He doesn't even know my boss. So I was like, this is a great opportunity. So I asked him, <clears throat> I asked him if he ate a lot of bacon. I'm not kidding. I actually asked him that out of the blue. Like after a five minute lull in the conversation, when we said nothing because we're kind of introverted, I turned to him like, do you eat a lot of bacon? What do you think he said? What do you think he said? Come on, let's, let's, let's find out what you think. Do you think he said no? You're right. He said no. It was super exciting. He said no. And I was like, wow, this is such a profound conversation. I just learned that you don't eat a lot of bacon. And then I said, guess what I said? This is profound and pathetic. Pathetic? Did I say pathetic? I meant prophetic. I also said no. I said, oh, that's interesting. I don't eat a lot of bacon either. And that was the entire conversation. Uh, yeah, I'm not a very good conversationalist. That's why I get on the internet and there's nobody in the room and I just talk with, like to myself. That's the perfect conversation for me. It's called a soliloquy. I learned this word like last episode or something. Define soliloquy. I can't spell it, so I just do it like this. Soliloquy. And then Google's like, oh, of course, you meant soliloquy, right? Just a bunch of I's and L's. That's definitely soliloquy. So here it is, and you can listen to it. A soliloquy is an act of speaking one's thoughts aloud when by oneself. This is the important part. So let me get my alt three right here. When by oneself, or regardless of any hearers, that's you. Ha <laughs> ha. Regardless of you, did you catch that? It's not like you're kind of important. It's like regardless of you. And then we'll keep reading here. <clears throat> More to the definition, um, especially by a character in a play. Now that part's a little iffy. You wouldn't maybe call this a play, but I am wearing headphones on my cheek, so that's pretty close. Why am I doing that anyway? 
This is uncomfortable. I did it for fun, uh, but I'm kind of regretting it because my cheek hurts. I think maybe this move. Hmm? Or maybe this move. <clears throat> okay, so if he takes me, I'm hurting because I only have one thing that can recapture. So I need to protect that thing again. But then if I move my queen in one of these two moves, then he's got this ouch full capture. I don't have one way to capture that. So these bishops are just bishopping me in the face. So maybe if I play this, I'll have two defenders this way, two defenders this way. That's what you need, two options. You always need two options in life. Don't let yourself get trapped in only one option. This is my advice for today. Uh, until I think of some other advice. Don't let you get trapped in one option, because that's not really an option. I mean, if you're like, okay, so here are my choices. I could do this, or I could starve to death. I suppose I could die of the plague. And it's like it's like the only thing you can do, because most people don't consider starving to death to be an option. When they iterate through their options, they're like, hmm, starve to death, scratch that. It doesn't even count. So then that's, you're stuck with just one option. That's not a good idea. <clears throat> uh, I think we have scary things. I mean, not like I'm scared about this pawn over here, but... It, what if it's scary later? He takes, I'm like, okay, I have two options, so I take, but then he takes again. Oh man, it's called a battery. It's where he charges up and then he attacks. Mm. I could take this though, and he, he can't recapture, but he could take this. Man, it's a capture and rampage, and I'm on the back foot. So I'm gonna start with this move. And I'm just gonna let him take this. So there's a robot in my chat, and he's stating profound statements, like Chesspiz is online right now. Hi, bot. Um, the genius, genie, this is very hard to spell. Geniusity is falling out your ear. Let's see what he says. It's a robot, so he'll probably say something like, yes, it is. C3 is defended twice. Yeah, but it's attacked twice. Didn't be a answer you know what a piece. Yes, but if I played that, then he would say, nope, you can't do that. So that's, I didn't want to waste my time. I wonder if this is a threat. Oh, queen h7, checkmate. I should mention that to him. BTW, queen h7 is mate if you have only one escape move. That says escape. It's spelled just like the word escape. I'm going to request a take back on that. Don't play bishop c uh, f5 calls. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to mention the rules, huh? I hope he's, he's playing by the rules. Because if this is chess, I'm really feeling dumb right now. Playing the whole thing, the whole game, every move. <laughs> I've been playing my second best move. I'm like, okay, I've got two options. I'll play the worst one. And so, oh good. He's accepting this take back. And he's even adding me some time. He's such a gentleman. Have you noticed? We know he's a man because he's watching chess with T. But the gentle part has been revealed right now. The robot didn't answer. That's too bad. The robot did not say yes. I like robots. They're predictable. So obviously he doesn't want me to play this. So I'm going to play this. Bam! In your face, man! You are so checkmated! This was cool! I love the rules that Messy Answer came up with so I could just win inst- Oh wait, I take back. Never mind. Oh, he found the hole in my plan. Hmm. I was ready to celebrate. In fact, I already was. <clears throat> well, now I can play any move I want, such as this. Cool. Well, that night was free before. I should have started with this. So then when he's like, no, and asked for the take back, then bam, I play we take the G6. Checkmate in two moves. Because he has to play that. And then I play that. Queen G7. And he, yeah, it's so checkmateful. Checkmateful is a word. And I would win. Mm. Okay. So I don't care if he plays that move. Obviously, this is my threat. So I could play whatever I want. And all he can do is squirm like this. This looks bad, right? But it's not bad, because I can refuse this move. No, I can refuse this move, which is the one move that really makes me look dumb. And then everything else is just beauty. It's just like pure essence of beauty contained in a bottle of beauty, like, and beauty bubbling out the top. That's what this chest position is like. Imagine a vial, 
like this, except instead of being vase shaped, it's like bubbly at the bottom, and then a beauty comes up in the neck. It's like a beauty neck, right? And then inside the vial is a liquid of beauty. So he proposes a take back, and now I crush him with this move of beauty. Uh, that's checkmate. GG. You have to resign now. I have to resign now because I am a move of beauty. B E A U T Y. That's a weird word, but it comes from French. It's pronounced B, which means beauty. <coughs> Good game. Thank you. I'll say thank you. That was interesting. So these new messy answer rules where you can't take back, so you lose instead. That's interesting. Um, yeah, he only had one way to escape the checkmate, and I was going to force him to not play that way, and then it was over. Definitely interesting. Who wants to play against? Chess Whiz again. I'll put another chat in here. Lee Chess Ratings Chess Whiz. Hey, ta hey ta bot is telling me everything here. I'd like to see this in official variant somehow. Music Dan. I'm encouraged by that. Maybe whether a given person is playing a game. That's a sentence. Chess Whiz, I advertised you more. Dropbox, man. I'll click this link. I hope it's a virus. Dropbox, Inc. Virus spreader. I'm not going to download that, you sneaky man. I don't want viruses on my computer. You'd be stealing my bitcoins. Finally, why rated though? Oh, oh sorry, oh sorry. Fix for the points. I always play rated. You might think that that's a typo, like the S is missing, but no, I moved it over here for fun. I always play rates, man. I always play rates, cause I from the hood, and I say when I always play. Oh wait, that's not right. It should it should be a Z. Always. I always play rates, man. That sounds right. You have to have the right like hand gesture. It looks like this. Rates, man. I play rates. <laughs> Do not make a gif out of that. Do not. That'd be a pretty big mistake. <clears throat> hmm. That's an interesting move. Messy answer knows what's coming down. In this case, it's his knight. So I think I'll just say, don't play that. Propose a take back? Take back is disabled. Disabled. I should probably type like this. I'm like, I have a speech impediment, except it's in my fingers. Oh, great. Disabled. There we go. Three tries. Take, take, take back. It's going to be about half hour here, but I'm going to get this typed out. Hold on. Take back is disabled. Disabled to build. Disabled. Take back lols. So apparently we have to play chess. That's funny. And, and it's rated. So I guess it's chess. Chess. Because it's rated and I wants, wants my points. Gotta use the Z's. He's saying, but, but, but I played 94. Man, you own Chess Whiz TV. Nothing fair happens on Chess Whiz TV. You get up in the morning, you're like, wait a minute, is Chess Whiz TV on? I want some unfair things in my life. Let me go on Chess Whiz TV right now. So you log in there, and you're like, oh, he's not even playing anybody good. I'll play him. This will be great. And then in two moves, you find out that you're playing a rated game, and you just played 94, and he doesn't even, he doesn't even have compassion for you, man. It's not like he cares. He just takes those points away from you. It's bad. <clears throat> and that's what's happening right now. See the 1950, 1703. 1703. Oh, it's classical. Man, I don't play classical. Except for right now, thanks for the points, Missy Answer. It takes about a year to play a, a rated game in classical mode, so that's why my rating's not very good in classical. You want to know? Let's go to my profile here. Hmm. Yeah, classical, 55 games. So that means I've been playing chess for about 55 years and one, one classical game a year, which is about the fastest you can play because it's a slow time control. So that's why my rating slow. Actually, the rating, the reason that is because I used to do simuls back when you couldn't do simuls in simul mode, and I would do them rated. So I would play 10 slow games at once. And then, of course, I'd be slow because I can't manage my clock. My clock is like, I'm, see it, Chess Wiz? I'm going to zero, and it leaves. So it, yeah, I have trouble. And when I'm playing 10 games at once, they're all going to zero at once. It's really tough. So that's why I, um, that's why, that's, that's the reason and, and stuff. See, so, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. This is an interesting square. That was a brilliant move, 94. I don't know what to do now. Uh, maybe I'll take some of these pawns. Which ones? Oh, I'm so confused. I'll take this one. Did I play this move? Hmm. Messy answer in the chat. I guess I'll play here. I would play here, but that brilliant 94 has prevented it. It's so sad, but this is like the last game or something. <clears throat> I think this is a cool move. 
Because then he plays here. Look at this. Boom, boom, boom. Guarding the bishop, attacking the queen, and attacking the... Okay, so I won't do that. It's too cool for me. It's too cool for my socks. This is better. Attacking this pawn. Oh, I've got the itch on my nostril. Man, you ever get an olfactory itch? That's actually a word. Define olfactory. It's not like old factory. Look at this. Olfactory, which is relating to the sense of smell. Listen. Olfactory. Oh, are you showing up the whiz? It's not olfactory. I want a newbie thing to say. It's all factory. Like, how many factories do you have? All factory. I have all the factories, man. Don't even ask. <clears throat> I got them all. That has to do with the sense of smell. So you've learned two new words. The soliloquy, which is spelled S-I-L-I-L-I-L-I-L-Y. Enter Google. Tell me how to spell that. And then the olfactory, which is uh, pertaining to the sense of smell. Is there another word you'd like to learn? There is. Defenestrate is a very important word. Now, I can't quite spell that one either, so I just do uh, this, showing results for... Defend and net sort tie to Google is very helpful by the way. So defenestrate is to throw it's not someone. You can defenestrate anything you want. Um, the room, to dismiss someone from a power of authority is to defenestrate them. I didn't know that. Obviously I'm more interested in the window definition. So it means it means to throw out of a window. But I didn't know it was always people. I mean, I, I defenestrate my computer on a regular basis. I'm like, what a bad test move. You know what would be better? Is if my computer were like outside the window right now. So I do that, and then it's like, that actually wasn't better. I have a hard time foreseeing consequences. So that actually wasn't good, but that's usually what gets defenestrated is my computer. There is another term, auto defenestration, which is pretty rare. But that's where you throw yourself out the window. I'm thinking about this move, because then I can go knight here. I'll do it. And don't mind the fact that my pawns become super bad because super bad is the new good on Chess Boost TV. <clears throat> Look at that. I bet you can't get pawns like this. I mean, if you sit down the chessboard, you're like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get pawns like Chess Whiz, and then I'm going to draw little circles on them until they look like spaceships. It's not going to happen. You can try as hard as you want, but it won't happen because you're not stupid enough to try. That was a bad move, by the way. For you guys who are watching because like, you want to play better chess, like, oh, I know what I'll do. Like, I'll watch Chess Whiz. And then when he makes a move, I'll be like, yes, next game, I'm doing that. That's a mistake, by the way. I mean, I don't know everything good about chess, but I do know you should not play chess like me. That's one thing I know about chess. So so don't do that. that, that this green arrow here, don't, don't play that move. Yeah, so I think I just take this. That'd be a bad move. He solidly up his pawns. Let's not allow for that. Um, I would like my knight to transvest eight itself over here. Let's not do that. Um, this is a knight that's not guarded, so if I play my queen here, that wouldn't be very useful because uh, he would take me. So I've, I've ruled out some moves. This is helping. I could play c4 and allow him to trade off his isolated pawn with my isolated pawn. There are so many interesting choices here. Hmm. But the important thing about this position is... Let me just teach you a little bit about chess right now. In chess, there's two players, no matter how hard you try. If you think you should play three-player chess, you're confused. I used to think that, but that was when I was confused. Here's why. Player one, he's a pretty good player, right? So he like, he like moves a bishop because he's pretty good. And then player two, he moves his knight. And player three is like, well, I'm pretty bad. I'm moving my king. So he moves his king. And it's not even legal because it's stuck. You can't move, right? So then you're back to player one again. Now, <laughs> player one's a good player. So he takes that knight of player twos, right? He's like, bam, he takes that knight. <clears throat> he's good. I, did, yeah, you know that part. So then player two, he's good too. He's like, whoa, he just took my knight, man. I don't know what to... Oh, wait, there's a bishop. And he takes player one's bishop. Now, player three, he's the bad player, remember. All he's done is move his king with an illegal move. And he looks up and he's ahead by a piece. His opponent over there, he lost a bishop. And his other opponent over there, he got up and went to the bathroom because he's taking so long. And he's like, whoa, whoa. So he moves his king again, right? And he's winning. So that's the problem with three-player chess. The bad player wins. That's also the problem with... Um, there's something else where the bad player wins. I think it's this Cho, actually. I think it's like when Chess Wiz wins. That's, that's the bad player. Something like that. Yeah, so so that's something about chess. There's two players. 
There's an interesting chess variant called tandem chess. I should tell you about this because it's cooler than it sounds, which is where you sit down with a partner. It doesn't have to be your wife or husband. I don't need to say husband because many of you guys are married anyway. Not to husbands. <laughs> and <clears throat> I, I just want to deal with these knights. I really do want to deal with them. I want to get out my deck of cards and deal with those knights. I think this move is kind of cool. Uh, you sit down with a partner of your choosing and you switch whose who's move it is. Like, you know in ping pong where you hit the ball and then the next ball that comes back, they have to hit it. Um, your partner, I mean, in doubles. And then the next one, you have to hit it. You're forced to alternate. Even if they're all coming right to you and you're like, I can do this, man. You're not allowed to do it. You have to take turns. Well, that is tandem chess. So you make a move and then the next move they have to make no matter what. Even if you're sneezing, it has to be the same as it has to be. Um, which is like, it's called the sneezing exception exception, which means there's no exception for sneezing. And that actually makes for an interesting game because you're like, I love castling queenside and pawn storming. So you like castle queenside. And then the other thing's like, no, I hate queenside castling. And so, but you're like the same person. You're just attached to each other. Siamese tandem twins, whatever it is. Hey, that's a cool move. Because uh, it discovers that. But then he'll be like, bam, 93, blocking the queen and attacking the queen while my knight is sitting there in danger. So I don't know. Maybe I should do this, something else. Mm, oh, maybe I should do that. Um, if I do that, he'll capture me. Um, that doesn't seem like much. All right, I'll play this move because it's check. Check. Man, you're in check. It's actually cool because now I can do this. But that's a problem. He's still going to get 93. 93 is bad. Why is this smart? Why is queen a2 check? He's like, no, I missed that one. Whoa, who is this Iminki? Who is Iminki? Look at this. Iminki is now hosting you. I mean, usually hosting means like you walked into their house and you're sitting at their table and they're hosting you. But in this case, I don't even know this guy and he's hosting me. It's kind of scary. Uh, I'll play this. Good thing there's an eight second increment so I can sleep between moves. Um, why did I do that? I was going to take over there. No, I'm a Dumbo. I'll play this. That's smart um, because by moving there, I avoided running out of time. Pretty smart. Yeah. <clears throat> this game's taking forever, but I'm going to win. I'm going to win with my winning device. Uh, here? Here. Let's start whittling away at the defense to the knight. Starting by attacking b5, because that's completely unrelated. And now, uh, I'll take that. I don't know what I'm doing. I've, I've controlled the center this whole game, but it's been... This is cool, because I'm attacking like this, in red and green. I'm attacking with Christmas colors, and it's tough. Okay, so now, I've been thinking about taking this knight for hours, and now I'm really thinking about it again, and it's still bad. So I won't do it because I have the self-control of a mammoth who has self-control. So that's why I'm not doing it. Maybe I should play f3. Wouldn't help. He just played. Well, maybe I should play rook bishop here. Rook bishop. I'll move my rook bishop right there. Now, my next move is going to be a really good one. I'm going to move my... Oh, it's my turn again. Oh, it's so hard. What if I do this? Uh, take, 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 take. I get back rank checkmate is what happens. Mm. No, I lose my vision for nothing. Oh, I need a larger brain to apply to this chess game. Oh, I imagined my rook could jump. Because in Chinese chess, your rook can jump. It's called a cannon. And the only way it can capture is by jumping. Like, for example, if there's an enemy piece here, I can't take it. But if there's an enemy piece over here, then I can be like this. Why And then you can capture it, <clears throat> which is a good except I'm out of time right now. So I'll play this. Whoa, that was smart, chess whiz. That was super clever and smart. And so the cannon, it just messed with my mind. I haven't played Chinese chess in about 10 years. But 10 years ago, I was confused. And that little confused atom stayed in my brain until today. Now I'm down a rook, huh? That's bad. I guess sacrificing the exchange is not a good way to lose a piece. Hmm. I'm like, oh no, I lost a knight, a bishop. I guess I'll lose a rook now. Yeah, this is bad. I think he's going to win, actually. There's a chance. There's a chance. Um, 
if you want your points, you're going to have to earn them. Colon B. That's not very rude. I mean, it is. I got my verbiage mixed up. Verbiage, by the way, does not mean like words. It means annoying and obnoxious words. Look at this. It's also spelled with the I. Verbiage. Speech or writing which uses too many words. Oh, that's a lot like Chesbus TV. Oh, I lose on time. Man, I was winning by negative 14 points. Um, not counting the pawns. And I just lost. I was so close. I can't believe I lost. I've got to go. Bye. This has been Chesbus TV. Thanks for watching.